Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tadaima Terrace House Podcast, your weekly companion to your favorite show on Netflix. I'm Robert Scarpanito, and I'm joined here by Daily Wilhelm. Konbanma. Jack Cepeda. Hiroshimase. And Colin Sparling. Hello, everybody. Don't mind our DJ neighbors upstairs. Yeah, you can probably hear it on my track, and it's great. It's just, you know, we've got we've got dinner and a show. That, that's what we're doing yeah. right now. We've got yeah. a, a background this... track here as Robert's talking. Yeah, they're they're just dropping the bass up there, and they mm-hmm. don't give a shit. Such yeah, as it's... such as uh, you know, apartment living. It's just how it goes, man. Yeah, yeah, and and we and we've knocked on their door many times. So this is what we're living with. So if you want to, <laughs> actually, I was about to dox them, but then I realized we'd be doxing ourselves. So never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do any of those things. Robert, yeah. no. The <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you, you know what else did a bunch of docking kind of things? Uh, Rio and <laughs> Vivi in this episode of Terrace House. Um, <laughs> True facts. Smooth. Yeah. Thank you. I really, I really hope the direct translation of what they said really was docking. Because I didn't, I didn't catch what the Japanese was, but I really hope that's what it was. They just said docking. I hate it. In my head. Good. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, this week we're talking about Tokyo 2019 2020, episode 28, Starving for Affection. Such Me. a sad title now, in retrospect. Man, it. Oh, it's, it really is. It's really sad. I, didn't, I did not think the person who was starving would be the person who was starving. Yeah. There's yeah. basically two plot points really focused on in this episode. That's Ryo. And Vivi, and then Tupas basically is taking over the rest of the episode. Yeah, yeah, we, it, it was a lot of focus on uh, very few scenes. I feel like I feel like it was very few scenes in this episode in total. Handful. Yeah, I honestly am surprised with how much Topaz stole the spotlight in this, considering mm. everything we've seen of him last week. He seemed very, you know, tightly wound, very like a little boring, right? You know, very strict schedule kind of guy. Um, yeah, but yeah. no, it kind of goes a little crazy here and it's exciting. Uh, so let's dive into the episode. Uh, we open up with the panel uh, where Yama jokes about how Russians are no joke. They are very serious, very proud people. And their leader rides a bear and or or tiger. tiger. Yeah, shirtless. <laughs> and or tiger. Why not both? shirtless? Yeah, they're they're hardy people. Uh, I think they were saying some point in this episode or another episode that uh, relations, international relations between Japan and Russia have never been stronger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> as proved by this season of Terrace House. Yes, this is this will smooth over the great Russo-Japan War of I, I think 1900s, early 1900s. I know there was a war. I forget when. Seems legit. Weird. Yep. <laughs> that checks History. out. That checks yeah. out. Yeah, yeah they, they fought, whatever they fought you say, over Robert. Some islands north of Japan, just just like the islands to the west of Japan and Korea. Um, so we're in the first floor. It's Hana and Kai, and this is directly picking up from the end of last episode, where, as you might remember, Hana was in tears as Vivi and Ryo, uh, you know, got it on. Um, no, they no? weren't. <laughs> they were not. They, they were just no? talking, let's, let's right? Let's be specific. They're just talking, but they are heavily flirting. I'm like, let's not put the image in people's head that they're just fucking over there on the couch and Hana's crying in the kitchen. Yikes. Yeah, that's pretty dark. But- <laughs> nah, but the panel does say she is fucking that rice later on. It's very erotic. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, hold on. <laughs> what is that happening? Milky rice. We need to put the milky on rice. This episode. <laughs> See, the more you talk about it, it just it just sounds more, worse, and worse and worse. Then we had to have Yama in his. Uh, by the way, like, what is he wearing? Like a purple like cardigan or some sweater? Uh, man, it drives me crazy though. I don't comment too much on what the panelists are wearing, but when any guy has his shirt button buttoned all the way to the top of his Adam's apple, I just like kind of gag. It makes you like, whoa, that's too mm. tight. As one of one of these thick neck dudes out here in the world, it just gives me stress to see the button all the way at the top. Yeah, for me, I just think it's more stylish to not have the top one buttoned. It's just bad. Yeah. V-necks, man. That's how I sure. live my life. Or tank Gotta top. Show, actually. Sure. He, 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 he needs to button hair. that top button to hold back the Yama insults. No, I don't think it does a very good job. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. Yeah, he's talking he about the milky rice. Control himself. <laughs> He had to apologize to Tori Chan and the rice makers of Japan (laughs) who nourish him. He had to do the deep bow. The deep bow. Uh, That's wonderful. (laughs) Moshiwaki gozaimasen. So yeah, Kai asks, um, or Hana asks Kai, hey, can we talk in the playroom? Uh, And as they walk over there, like, like Hana can't even look at Ryo and Vivi. She wears the hood like 
full Yikes. on like over yeah, her covers eyes. her eyes <laughs> yeah, her face and everything she just she yeah. rushes to and the she's, playroom she's like sniffling um you know audibly and mm. i think Isn't later mm -hmm. go ahead mm -hmm. oh yeah no there's no subtlety happening here whatsoever because later mm -hmm. vivi's like i thought you were laughing but there were tears and sniffles and yeah I think Vivi probably knew she was crying at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. 100%. And this was definitely Hana trying to be like, look at me, I'm crying. Look at me, I'm distressed and distraught. I want you to notice that I'm leaving because of you. Sulking, head yes. tucked in the hood, in the panda hood. By the way, that robe, I was a fan. I liked the little tail. I thought it was a cute yeah. little robe. It's cute. Tail. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. been rocking this for a couple episodes now, and I'm here for it. The, the, this panda onesie. It just looks and comfy. It looks, very it looks very fuzzy. It also looks very hard to clean. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with all those tears soaked. Oh, you just beat me to it. Her. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, she'll yeah. wipe it off with her tears. Yeah, there yeah. you go. But I think that's the big, uh, one of the, this starts to one of the big takeaways from this episode. I do, <laughs> the, this relationship that Hana and Vivi have, not very healthy. <laughs> it's not any healthier after this. Yeah. So here's uh, the thing. So Kai and Hana go to the playroom and I'm just saying like Kai, like this whole episode and last episode, like he's looking good. Like I was saying, he looks Zack De La Rocha X esque of Rage Against the Machine a little bit. But like I was getting maybe because he's helping her, he's listening intently, he's giving trying to give some advice and listening to her problems. I was getting some Hansan vibes here in the uh playroom. He reminds me of him a little bit. And I think he reminds the panelists of Hansan a little bit too, with his deep voice, with his Adam Apple, with his uh kind of just muted demeanor you know so i was i don't know i was just kind of like kai's kind of coming up in the world here a little bit for me yeah, yeah i i can see that um i i will say at first i thought kai was a little quiet like he was just sitting there and listening which is fine you know right like sometimes people just need a shoulder to lean on right mm -hmm. um hana even described rio as and this made me sick to my stomach she described rio as the person i have special feelings for <laughs> special yeah. feelings you guys ever have special feelings special feelings special feelings special feelings it's like why can't she say like i have a I like, crush on him or yeah. i like him i'm interested in him yeah it, it's it, so she obvious. has to be so talk roundabout about, yeah she has to talk about it like she's a freshman in high school mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the thing about this conversation too was that i i guess her takeaway was like i know he doesn't like me or i strongly suspect he doesn't feel the same way but i have to confess even further than i already have to him or else i'll feel like unfulfilled somehow and i don't know if that's really like great advice to like actively pursue somebody when you don't feel like they like you anymore i don't i don't know that's if i would give that same advice yeah there there's one thing that kai said that i kind of want to key on here or key in on here uh, it's it's where he says uh something to the effect of it's not the other person's responsibility or it's not your responsibility to worry about how the other person reacts. And so how do you guys feel about that? So like if, if you tell, you know, you're worried about confessing your feelings to someone is, is it right or wrong to be worried about how they react? Hmm. So I, yeah, in that case, it's like, I definitely see in this very specific situation that, uh, I, I feel like Hana is coming from the place that she's like, if I don't like fully fess up, I'm going to forever regret that. Like personally, that's going to be a sure. problem for me. Mm. Um, and that's fine to feel the need to address that. But yeah, like, like I, I think there is like some responsibility to like know whether or not you're making someone else uncomfortable or burdening them with like, an expectation that they're not necessarily going to fulfill and they don't like need to like i i guess what i feel is that like she shouldn't hmm put a lot of expectation on rio to like hear her out i don't know if mm. that makes sense mm. yeah i get where you're coming from because i think there, there's a little bit of selfishness, right, in Kai's, um, mm, mm. in Kai's advice, but at the wow. same time, I think everyone has the right to be at least a little bit selfish about their feelings, right? Like, if if you feel this way, you should like whether it's oh I'm, I'm annoyed with you or I like you or I think you should do this, like 
you should tell them that, right? I, I think there's you owe yourself a little bit of that if it's bothering you that much. But mm. at the same time, on the flip side, you need to be aware that what you say to them has repercussions. You know, what you say will change the way they look at you or change the way they feel about you. And that's something you need to be prepared for as well. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Reading yes. the room is such a huge aspect of Japanese culture. Like we learn that we see that play out in Terrace House all the time until it isn't where it's like in love everyone okay well now i can't read the room anymore now you have to expressly state this to me in no uncertain terms line this up for me okay i like you you like me or not da 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 da, da. so it's like okay they're like reading the room but then where was reading the room when she was talking in one on one at the table it, it was untimely he was injured and he was right. you know but like of course he understands what she's trying to say and of course she already senses what the answer is going to be so like, where's reading the room here anywhere? It just kind of gets all mm, thrown out mm. when it comes to romance or, or love. It's like, okay, she knows already. That's why she's in this room right now with Kai speaking about this because she knows he the answer is not going to be good. Uh, she, she knows he has way better chemistry with Vivi and there's nothing that can be helped about that. And she knows what the answer is. So I guess I'm just like, okay, you have your answer now. It's just kind of you're going down an unhealthy dark path by pursuing it until he says to you, like, grabs you by the shoulders and shakes you. Like, no, I don't like you. It's like, I don't why, like why, you. Yeah, why go through that? Like, just move on, you know? So, I don't know. Also, it's not great news for Kai, too, as another aspect, mm. right? Because he took Vivi out on that date, which we find Hot out right. wasn't necessarily a date, uh, you know, to her. Oh, and she that makes was, that clear. Yeah, that, was, clear. that was rough, too. I was like, dude, like, just mm. be nice about it. Like, obviously, it was a date because you guys talked about it the day before and then went out. But now because Rio is asking about, it, oh, that wasn't a date at all. Like, what, it like, wasn't uh, a date. It wasn't a date. That's kind of sh- that's kind of shitty. Platonic. I thought of her. Yeah, no, I, um, I think my, my favorite thing here is that there's an example, right, of Hana being really bad at reading the, Rio, the room. But then in this episode, there's a really steamy example of two people really knowing how to read the room. Uh, I think let's dive into the, the softcore porn of Woo. Rio and Vivi. Woo. Flirting. I like flirting this back is and what forth we like call professionals. Like softcore porn. Like we're yeah. so starved for a- affection in like hey. this season of Terrace House that we're like, oh, wow, they had a really great back and forth. Who is getting steamy in here? Are I you just... saying go? Are you saying that the title of this episode is pointed back at us? We're yes. starved for effect. We're the ones. It's us. <laughs> I mean, definitely. I, I kind of see that yeah, as the uh, producers or the editors, you know, looking at us based on what we've seen from Terrace House so far. But I love this scene and I love their interaction when she hip checked him last week too, because it just reminds me of what it's like to like kind of have those first moments when you're falling in like with somebody or becoming maybe infatuated Mm. with somebody. It was heavy, heavy flirting, the heaviest we've seen so far in the season. And they're both very good at it. And this is what it looks like when you put these two types of people together. And I was getting butterfly feelings. It just reminded me of, moments in my life where i've experienced similar things is is nostalgic i guess in a sad way <laughs> yeah i'd like to point out that throughout this whole scene vivi is still doing that uh that sexy shoulder thing as rio described it Dude, last week the shoulder is out the bra <laughs> strap is loose i'm sorry i'm just saying that's like a hot thing and she knows she's doing it she knows she wore that light blue sky blue bra you know because she's gonna show that strap i mean i don't know how premeditated that was to be honest with you but she knows she's flirting by throwing her shoulder out there which didn't need to be out there Mm. it's a total move yeah and wearing that r for rio necklace too how could she r for rio (laughs) and then r and then r for her last name right razdomina and then r for her ex whoa pop the brakes hold on (laughs) (laughs) who still who would still wear that that's, That's kinda, a weird yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I that, I can't believe that was said. I was kind of taken aback by that. I was like, oh, a little too far. Stop. Yeah, yeah, Stop. It's a little. Uh... To me, to me though, the bigger, the more scandalous thing is what when you guys brought up. Like, I'm sorry, I forgot who said it just a minute ago. But R for Rio, like yeah. Rio brought that up, and I'm mm. telling you guys, I do not think he was necessarily playing when he said that. He's like, you ever hear that song? Like, you're so vain. You probably think mm-hmm. this song is about you. Don't yeah. you? Don't you? Is you're that the so Bengals? Vain, you're so vain. Uh, anyways, 
Sorry. But that's what was happening there. I think he was dead serious. Not, maybe not dead serious, but more serious than I want, than he's trying to let all like, was that all for me? I thought it was for me. Yeah, like, I think that was him dipping his toe in the water and she reciprocated yeah. back. Mm-hmm. You know I what I'm saying? See him being a little guilty of like being genuinely kind of like vain in this conversation, though, because of all the, oh, wow, me too. Oh, wow, mm-hmm. me too. Mitz, and it's too. almost like. He's like, did you study me before this? Like, did you look into my likes? Yeah, yeah. He goes, wow, <laughs> me too. Plus, we know he's a pirate. Pirates are, well, he moonlights as a pirate, and generally right. they're pretty vain and full of themselves, so I can kind of see that. And are they? And, um, yeah. Okay, and... I mean, they want that booty. He, I mean, it's hard not to be vain when you're, like, the captain, your face is everywhere, girls in the house are already fangirling over you, wearing your shirt, you know, but he's always asking, like, hey, where's the love? Where's the love? He's always trying to, like, seek that affection. And Rio is guilty, I think, very much of just wanting to know that he can if he wants to, mm. which is kind of shitty in a lot of ways. And uh, the reason I'm saying that is because, you know, how it's playing out with Emika, how it's playing out with Hana here. But it's hard to deny that there are some serious fireworks. There's some serious chemistry going on in this scene. They are getting along on a whole nother level than he ever did with Emika, even with that scandalous knee touch. Knee I was touch. about to ask, so we're being kind of like pessimistic about like Rio and Vivi's vanity here and like th- during all the flirty conversation. But do we do we feel like there is a genuine connection here? Because I felt like there was like I feel like he's like being very surprised, like, wow, you really seem like you're older than me, but you're not. We have a lot of similar experiences, and that connection is happening. Yeah, I, I'm so I am calling out Rio's like vanity here with him saying that. Like, I think it's just it's a joke, but I also think he's kind of serious about that. But it's hard. I mean, at the end of this, when she is stirring up that milky rice and she's like smiling, and I can tell, like in her head, she's replaying the events that just happened in the last 15 minutes. Her head smiling about it. I'm like. Oh, they're definitely banging. They're definitely dating. They're gonna go date. They're like, yeah. How could they not? This is like, this is crazy. I, actually, it puzzled me, Robert. Like when you said last week, like you don't think he likes her. Do you still feel that way? Because like, yeah, it's pretty clear to me that this is going down. So I think I think you were really onto something when you said uh, the the thing about Rio's vanity, where he likes to know he can. He does. I think. I think this is another one of those. I think he like he wants to know he can. And I my guess is maybe I'm psychoanalyzing armchair therapisting this too much. But remember, he went to an all boys school. He didn't really get to like be like around women a lot. And he wasn't that smooth with women until recently. So now that's years of built up like, you know, I, I didn't get laid a lot when I was younger, but now I can totally do whatever I want. and I can prove it. Didn't they yeah. um, say they're going to mm. go on a museum date or something? I don't know, man. They were just hitting it off so hard. She took the video of him doing his hair, just saying, oh, I, I, knew the, like I knew the Ponzu. Oh, yeah. Ponzu. I love Ponzu. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, uh, yeah. That's why she broke accent. out English. Yeah, her Russian broke accent. Out the English. I love Ponzu. Threw her head up. Ponzu. Oh, it was porny. When they were talking about Ponzu, yeah. Was- really telling the moment with the with the museum because it was like she's like i just like to go alone because you know then you can go at your own pace and he was kind of like taken aback like oh oh like you like this was the moment for him where it was like okay she might be younger than me but she's really mature and like yeah kind of mysterious yeah he said Mm -hmm. that right he said wow you're so uh, i I can't remember like Like, advanced for your age advanced for your age yeah but she's 24 and she is filling in all the gaps that he was seeing with the other girls, supposedly in in this scene here. You know, she he's she's giving him a lot of what he needs and he's reciprocating. I mean, they're flirting very heavily back and forth. She made him do the the head thing, the hair thing like Pons. three, three times or something like that, like three mm. times total. He's like, no, I don't want to. But he did it for her. And I, I don't know. It was it was tense, man. It was sexually tense. The entire Dude, time. It was hot. It was it, hot as shit. No, uh, I think here, I think we, we see examples of Ryo doing something that he wouldn't do for any of the other girls. Like if Emika asked him to do the video three times or if Hana did, he'd be like, no, that you're, I'm good. Right. No, but here, it's okay. His, no. Yeah. His, <laughs> his defenses are down and Vivi knows how to hit them. Right. Um, like when with the museum thing, 
she said i like to go alone but i might make an exception for you bam makes him feel special right and then two mm-hmm. when she, when rio thought oh is the r maybe for russia right and they joked about that for a little bit then he was like oh i should get a necklace that says j for japan and vivi's like it should be a v you know, oh, you know why. Dude. You know why. Dude. Oh, yeah, they're 100 percent they're 100 percent gonna date. And uh, that's where that's where they docked right docked. there. Yes. They, docked. they practically <laughs> docked. Uh, so I'm gonna throw this out there and I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know what Ponzu is. Does someone can someone explain it to and, me? Yeah, it's you just do. a condiment. Yeah, you do. You've no, had it a bunch of times. Like you What is it? You eat poke quite a bit, right? It's yeah. like so it's, citrusy, kind of soy saucy. Yeah. That's usually put on uh, poke, <laughs> Colin, Hawaiian you, style poke. You love panza. You I'm love sure I do. Love I've I've had poke love. several times. I just never. I don't think I've ever seen a bottle of panzu. Like, like I guess the best attention. way. Just think of lime flavored soy sauce. And Daly has now left the studio. She's going oh, to a refrigerator. Oh, she wait. Did you have panzu to get some panzu because she loves panzu? I love She's incredibly ponzu. close to her fridge, folks. A- after this episode, there's panzu. Oh, so, Ponzu. Is that this... Ajipon? Wait, is it the right brand? No, it's, it's not I don't Ajipon. Know. It's not. It's Ajipon. not. It's uh, Shirakiku. Ah. So, guys, after this episode, Ponzu. I totally Amazon Prime for me some Ponzu, and it's in a box waiting to be opened downstairs right now. Pretty excited nice. about it. Okay, are you guys ready for my controversial Terrace House take of the week? Official. I need my own theme music. Do you hate Ponzu? Is that your hot take? Are you guys ready for this? No, it's way more controversial. Are you ready? Hit me. Okay. <sighs> Would this conversation be taking place now if Rio worked at a Marvel bar, for example? No. How no. much of his career does this play a factor in his attractiveness level, of his status, of his clout, what have you? You know, because um, one, one of the things, let me just finish my thought here. Because uh, one of the things. That she says, I think, to Hana, I think it's later in the episode. Doesn't she say, I like the options. I like that he is, you know, uh, economically free to do whatever he wants to do. Like, if we say we'll go to Miami Mm. and it's just a whim, we can actually do it. And so the main takeaway here is for the gentleman or really anyone out there listening to us, like, it's real. Like, Like, people say money can't buy happiness. I think it can to a certain level, but it's not really about money buying happiness. It's about having options in life will give you happiness to have ex- experiences, right? And so money is really just a uh, proxy for having options, like she said. But like, it's very, imp- I think it's just a takeaway here, like going forward, the guys that get ladies on Terrace House, we can see this play out here. And you, you can apply it to your own life, but they're not the desperate ones that are like really like, oh, gosh, I like you. Oh, kiss me. Oh, let's go to this church and bow and shake my hand and be my girlfriend. Those aren't the guy. And let me grab your head and kiss you. Like, those aren't the guys that get girls. It's the guys this that sounds are very pointed now. Show, doing- show he's not the guy <laughs> who gets girls. Yeah, one person is yeah. on the attack. <laughs> but, it's like, but it's like the guys that actually get girls. And this guy's got all the girls in the house. He he focuses on himself. He's not worried about it. He's not stressed about it. He's taking care of himself. He's handling his money. He's his own man. He doesn't need a woman. He's not desperate for a woman. It'll no. happen when it happens, you know. Uh, so that's my main takeaway. That's my main kind of controversial thought for the week. But I think there are lessons here for a lot of people to to take from. Yeah, I, I would say that Rio, in a lot of cases, is a pretty objectively attractive person. Like... Yes, he's like a decent, good, decently good looking dude, but he's also confident. He's successful. He has a stable source of income. Right. A lot of income, too, you would assume. Right. And not to mention, I mean, being a, you know, a pro basketball player, I mean, that's this guy has some coolness, some clout to it in and of itself. And so, yeah, I mean, having a, getting with someone that has a stable income is certainly it's, it's comfort. You know, it's a guaranteed comfort and stability that. You know, so some people just just can't give you. So I don't I don't think, for instance, someone like Ruka or someone that was working at a Marvel bar or just like floating from part time job to part time job would be as appealing uh, to at least someone someone yeah. in her uh, of her mindset. 
And honestly, I think the droopy eyes, like, okay, that's a distinguishing feature that is cute because he's attractive otherwise. But if he was like a bad person or a jerk, people wouldn't think <laughs> so positively about, you know, his uh, his physical intricacies, I think. Mm. And it reminds Vivi of her ex. Remember? That's, or, yeah, that part. Or is that real? We had that whole or was conversation. That a, yeah. That's still so weird. Was that a yeah. flirt, though, or was that actually real? Who knows? And also, I wouldn't want to date someone if they were thinking about their ex. Like yeah. that would shy me away from that personally. Yeah, I th- I think my thoughts on on your controversial hot take, TM, uh, is yes for maybe someone like Vivi who very clearly does value stability in their partner. Of course, that's that's like what Rio offers, right? But I don't I don't think that necessarily means that someone who, for example, works at a Marvel bar will never find love, right? There's it's different strokes, different folks, right? There's probably someone out there who is like, man, I just want to date someone who's laid back, chill, thinks he could be Spider-Man still in the future. You know, I just want someone who's playful and fun like that. There's that levels be, to this. Yeah, it's important to yeah. know. There's levels mm-hmm. to it. Like, you know, you yeah, of course you can find love, but it also is just, it's something here. Like, if Vivi is going to be, v, that's obviously an important feature for Vivi in a long-term partner, you know? I, I'm just saying I think that his status, his his job, his day to day, his lifestyle only adds to how attractive he is, aside from any physical features there. Mainly. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I say let's let's move on because that was that was a really big scene. That took up like the first third of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, right? we were we were on that scene because we started with that scene, Shitro, back into that scene for like another yeah. I- 10 minutes i think the whole minutes. rice cooking it's, thing and by the way there was a really good um bobblehead kind of image of rio on the fridge which i thought was pretty funny um mm-hmm. but uh i think that the he was kind of testing her too in a weird way it's like he wanted to see what she would say when he needed rice and his foot was hurt because he was opening up the cabinet like halfway just to see what she would do and he goes well if you are okay with it then okay like i don't think he ever really intended to make it himself personally um that's my thought too hmm. from from what i think i know of rio i think he would have totally made it himself if he had to oh, but yeah. he was definitely testing the waters to see like hmm, he was testing see how to much see how far he would, yeah exactly right but but if she said no i'm not gonna make it for you i don't think he would have been like okay he i guess go, i'm gonna go riceless tomorrow go off and pout yeah be like fuck <laughs> yeah, this no. yeah he would he probably just made it himself <laughs> he's, <your> necklace back <laughs> he's a self-starter for sure yeah um so next scene here, let's go to another scene of a very smooth uh, communication transaction here. Uh, we're on the first floor. It's Emmy, Hana, Topas, and Kai. And uh, Emmy and Hana are starting to talk about, oh, what are we going to do for lunch? I don't know. Let's maybe heat this up. And Topas finally has a day off and he announces it to the house and then says, Emmy, would you like to go on a drive today and get lunch? So I think this scene right here but. Beli- starts off Topaz's long streak in this episode of just being on fire. Like we learn a lot more about Topaz in this episode, a lot more. And so far, like after this episode, Topaz becomes probably my favorite person in the house right now, just what? because all the stuff going on with him and all the stuff that we learned, he's very smooth, but we learned that he's got some wabi sabi going on. He's, he's an imperfect character, right? Mm. And he's, he's, his background is just so interesting. And now I just want to keep learning more and more about Topaz, but he starts off this episode by making this smooth ass move to take Emika out, and she is so excited to go out on the date, and the date goes off smoothly without it, a hitch. It's kind of smooth, but she she literally just put the egg in the frying pan. <laughs> and then he's That's like, true. Uh, have you eaten <laughs> yeah. yet? And she's like, uh, no, <laughs> yet. I'm about to. And he's like, all right, well, let's go get something to eat. And then Emika's like happy to do it. You know, it's not an inconvenience or anything like that. And then she just, I just like how she looks at Han is like, hey, please eat this egg. <laughs> please don't yeah. make my egg waste go to waste. <laughs> yeah, it was but Hana, like, Hana was happy for her. Yeah, like two minutes off of being smooth because he had been observing and he even like walked over and like got a drink of water and like looked and then like came back and was like, have you eaten yet? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if I would call Tupac smooth, honestly. I think he's kind of clunky because he's like, he is. Hey, he's like, hey, like, uh, you know, thanks for letting me take her out to Hana. He's like, what do you mean letting me, letting you take her out? Like, you can do whatever you want. She's like, own yeah. I need to be polite, even yeah. if it's not the yeah. appropriate situation yeah. to be polite in. Yeah. Like, I, I just always like, need to apologize. Ruthlessly polite. Yeah. Ruthlessly yeah. apologetic. 
what I, I will say, yes, it is clunky, but it's like it's like he's the shy guy from school that found his confidence, even though. But he's like in that middle ground where he's still trying to like really build on that confidence. But he's at yeah. least confident enough to like make moves and he's trying new stuff and he may be internally. He's probably scared shitless, but he's doing it anyway. But yeah, this whole episode, like we're seeing him receiving his own dose of Terrace House therapy. From within yes. Terrace House. This yeah. is like a therapy session for him to work through a lot of shit. So it's a turning into a real positive experience, hopefully. At least in this episode, you know, there's some there's some ups and downs, but uh, I think overall he's he's lucky to be in this position, as you and uh Yama say. Yeah. And you know what else he's lucky about? He's lucky that he finally was able to work hard so he could eventually drive a sick ass jag <laughs> with a beautiful girl. I think that was that nice. Was, I think I, that was nice for him to I vocalize. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny, though, because she's like, are you nervous driving the Jag? And he's like, oh, yeah. And then it cuts to a clip of him driving like a grandma down the streets of Tokyo and like 20, he's 30 cars behind them. <laughs> yeah, but it's just he's, like, I'm waiting for them to honk. Like if this was New York or anywhere, you know, they would have been like cussing at him, oh. flipping him off. Trust me, they probably honked in Tokyo, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You well, think? I will say, though, too, you have to remember that they also have the camera van in front of them shooting the car mm. from the front. Gosh, that would be annoying so if I was the, However fast they're going. It's the camera yeah. van's fault. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I bet it was like, wait, slow down, slow down. We need to get a wider shot. And it's like, but there's traffic. And it's yeah. like, just do it. A Don't lot of traffic, too. Traffic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I guess they're also lucky in that they get to go to Korean barbecue. You guys remember Korean barbecue? I remember. Oh, I miss barbecue. that shit. Remember yes. Barbecue. Bulgogi, pork, uh, pork belly, some some sundubu. the fucking the dukboki, the fucking fish, mm-hmm. the fish cakes. Some of my favorite. Uh, the the yeah, all marinated that. beef. Oh, okay, let's just name all the Korean food we know, guys. This is a Korean oh. food podcast now. <laughs> I just want some kimchi and some makgeolli. Please, Dude, I'm go. about to have. Some I steak liked that everything there. was UFO themed at the <laughs> yeah. K barbecue yeah. place oh. that they went to. That reminded me too. Okay, so pull back the fucking curtain for a minute, okay? In Wizard of Oz, like, okay, so the house has to know exactly where he's going, right? Yes. Why? Yeah. So they can set up the cameras to go there. So they can set a camera on a tripod, ostensibly outside of the exact restaurant they're going to. So they can have that shot yes. and look at the facade of the restaurant and look at them walking towards it. But when they're mm-hmm. walking towards it, okay, he's like, oh, where is it? Oh, where is it? He's like, oh, here it is. Yeah. You know, the one with the big terrace house camera in front of it. That's the place. Like, why are you yeah. acting like you don't know where it is? It was just, it struck me as odd, I guess. I, maybe I'm thinking about the show too much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, well, I don't know. I, I wonder how genuine, just just how genuine, rather, those scenes are. I, I mean, I, like I don't know. Like set up before or like. Totally. They're like, okay, now you're walking toward us. Or if someone's already there waiting <laughs> and they park and they get out of the car and they're like, oh, there's the camera guy. Where's, which one's the, oh, this is the restaurant. Yeah, because they can't even yeah. walk to the restaurant they're going to until they had to park, you know, and then walk to the restaurant. They can't even do that until the cameras are set up. Now, I, I will say benefit of the doubt, maybe. I mean, I agree that, yes, this part is definitely like kind of scripted, right? He knows where he's going. But yeah. he is still sort of new to Tokyo, right? And he's he came from another prefecture. So this might be more of a like, oh, man, I'm still a little bit new to the city. Where are we? Where are we going? Oh, there it is. You know what I mean? Like just kind of an internal mm-hmm. monologue of like, well, I'm I stumbling guess. through the streets guess, of Tokyo. But the clue is it's the one with the camera and the lights. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but he's not like he's going to say, oh, right next to the Terrace House camera. That's where we need to go at me. <laughs> you know, like he can't yeah. say it out loud. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a giant flag. Like, hey, outside. Shinji, cameraman. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Point us to the restaurant, please, producer. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think this was a great idea to have him drive Amika to the restaurant, though, because I mean, he is a driver professionally. Right. And so you have to think he he's getting to know the roads in Tokyo pretty well just from driving them so much already. Yeah. Um, and then two, I, I wondered to the, to the camera point, I, I wonder how long, if at all, if it's possible for people just to be used to being around the cameras. So they're just like, they can just get good at ignoring them. Mm, sure. That's a with, good point. With enough time. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. I was really worried at first about this date, their eventual date, because I was getting flashbacks to Aloha State because Topaz was like, let's go see that movie yesterday oh. and get dinner. And she was like, oh, I have, you know, some some plans, but maybe I can move them around. That's later in the episode. But 
initially when he was like, well, we both want to go see this movie. I was like, it's going to be awkward as hell. They're not going to talk. But because they drove and then they like sat down at a restaurant, they had a lot of time to talk. And I think like it was a good conversation. Yeah. Like what they talked about. I think that we got to know Tapas a little more. And Emmy, I definitely feel like still has a wall up. Like she's not giving away a lot. But I, I could see them hitting it off as far as like they're both kind of like in this stage of like figuring themselves out in deciding what they want to do with their lives ultimately. She also disclosed during this meal that she stayed because she saw potential in someone there in Terrace House, which is why she's still there. Wink, 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 wink nudge, nudge, nudge. Yeah, Rio, <laughs> Rio. And so that was kind of telling. And we also learn later on, I think in this episode, that Tapas is kind of there for Emika. <laughs> He was oh, watching her. I, he was watching her. He's been attracted to her, and he's surprised that, that she is still there in the house. I thought she was wink, wink, nudge, nudging about Topaz, because a lot of the discussion uh, about her recently has been like, oh, you know, this Topaz guy seems kind of cool. I guess it's not impossible, but um, I was getting that about Rio. I don't know. I'm just bringing my previous thoughts to it, I guess. Hmm. Daily, you're, yeah, you're giving I, us some I, I weird wonder. eyes. Hmm? I am. I am. This is a totally audio medium, so I should stop doing that. But I was making a face because um, there was a very, very brief moment when Vivi first showed up and they were talking about, oh, yeah, like we like Rio. But Emmy was like, I need to talk to you about that, Hannah. Like, I need I need to like revise something because I think I think Emmy's like under the duress of Hana and now Vivi. I think she's she might wave the white flag when it comes to Rio. Mm. Oh, we'll we'll see. I mean, we already know as an audience that they have zero chance because he already said that he doesn't like them. <clears throat> and also yeah. after this docking scene we just witnessed, like no, yeah, their their competition is too strong. Vivi's too much of a beast. Like I said, she's a killer and she's out there killing. She's slaying. Yeah. I don't know. If you ask me, I, I think I think Emika's all but given up at Rio at this point. Like, I just don't think she thinks the competition's worth it. And secondly, I get the feeling that uh, there is I, I don't know what you would call it. Not really animosity, but there's like a little bit of a discrepancy being that she's someone who doesn't really know what or where she wants to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And whereas Rio is someone who's got all that figured out. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 And so if I'm Emika, right, and the fact that he has all this stuff figured out at the same time, there's there's in the back of my head going to be a little bit of resentment if I had to, you know what I mean? Because maybe that's the reason why she asked him to take her to sushi, you know, and like did all this stuff because it was like one of those things where like, oh, you know, he can afford it, whatever. I, this, <laughs> I, like, I, I fucking don't hate him. Make him pay for my guy. sushi meal. Yeah, I want the $120 version, bitch. Yeah, I don't think it's that something she's... It, she's not a $600? <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't think she's... It's something she's conscious of, but, like, um, as opposed to, like, Topaz, where she feels like she can actually let her guard down and just relax around him, because, it, like, around Rio, I, she probably felt like she had to be on. You know what I mean? Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like he's this big time athlete and she he's expecting like this trophy wife material sort of person or something ridiculous like that. I think she had her I, an idea of like who she should be around him in her head, whereas Topaz, she can just be herself. And it must be nice to be pursued versus like doing all the pursuing. Like I yeah. feel like she's been like, Rio, let's go do this. Let's go do this. Whereas now the tables have turned and Topaz is like, Emika, what are you doing? What, what's up? Yeah. You want to go on a drive? You want to go to the movies? It's nice. It's a nice feeling, I'm sure. Yeah, to, to bring it back to the date as well, too. I think overall, it was a very positive date. She went to the restroom. He was very smooth, paid for it. Uh, it was They were ready to leave when they walked out. She has that kind of debriefing meeting with Hana about how it went. Uh, she thinks that he wants to get to know her better. Uh, you know, she. I think it's going in a positive direction. She doesn't dislike him. He didn't do anything blatantly terrible during that. You know, he paid her a lot of... Uh, compliments she said that she's she's you know doesn't normally like to wear a lot of makeup or something like that where she's wearing a lot or she's wearing makeup because she's not confident in herself he's like why aren't you confident in yourself you should be really proud really hot yeah. like you know i think that mm. overall he's showing he has more competence with this he's a more assertive dater than i thought he was 
coming into the house just laying down for everybody saying, hey, you're older, you're older, you're older, you first, you first. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's kind of seizing this, which is, again, uh, to me, just indicative of, yeah, he. this is why he's here. He's been watching Emika this whole time, and this is why he is here. He's been studying. He has. He's I, been doing his homework. What I, what I find funny is, like like you just said, Jack, he he's always the, you know, oh, you're older, you first, right? Do you think he would be this sort of smooth if he were if he were on this date with someone like Vivi, who's three years older than him? Do you think he'd still be able to say stuff like, oh, you don't need makeup? You know, like, oh, you should be confident in yourself. You're very, you should be very proud. <clears throat> I think that they're such different personalities. Vivi and Rio are together because they're similar personalities. And that's why I like um, Topaz and Emika because they had that quiet moment, right? But when he was asking her to go out on the state in the playroom, he said, you know, it's quiet sometimes. Oh, and Emika uh, echoes that too to Hannah, doesn't she? Because, yeah, we have mm. quiet moments. There are lulls sometimes, but it's okay. They don't have yeah, a problem fine. with quiet and silence. And like one of my favorite movies of all time, maybe my favorite movie of all time, Pulp Fiction, has a whole scene about that. About how they're comfortable. It's it's special to find somebody you're comfortable just being quiet and not talking and just being a person. You know, that is rare. There's a lot of, it's much mm. more common to like, oh, well, I have to talk. I have to fill the space. I can't handle being yeah. quiet because it's too awkward. So it's cool that they have that that dynamic together, I guess. So good for them. Yeah, and and to your point too, Jack, I think if, uh, I think if Topaz went out with Vivi, I think he, I think her bigger personality would be almost intimidating to him. I don't think he would really have yeah. this quiet confidence that he has with Emika at all. Mm. I just don't think it would just, I don't think it would vibe. Yeah. If this, the right it, way. yeah, he, it, he would be too uncomfortable. I think cause she'd be too. Bah! Yeah. Uh, the next scene I want us to go to here is the one in Akasaka where they're at that, uh, that big old convention center for the uh, ACC Tokyo creativity awards. Remember conventions. <laughs> I, I don't remember conventions. <laughs> Um, before times but we need to talk about this um lily frankie gets on stage and he gets a he gets a award uh and i didn't notice know this until someone mentioned it in our discord same i know what you're gonna say yeah now it's like here it is the man from sakeru gummies right sakeru gummies if you're you want to say like a like a white person um (laughs) he's the guy he's the guy behind those long long man commercials and if you don't if you don't know what this is, please pause our podcast, go YouTube it, oh, write the fuck you're gonna now, fall watch down them in order. There is an yeah. order. There is. There is. It's there like is. the sequel extended universe. There's the long, long man extended universe. This is a yeah. movie, basically. You need yes. to watch all of these advertisements because that's what they are, commercials. You need to watch. And stay after the credits. Yeah, well, how so many are there, though, yes. I wonder? Cool. No, I, okay. I'm pretty sure I've seen them all. So but, there's like seven. Yeah. My there's like a lot. And so he was passing those out now. I was wondering what that was. And now I like this guy way more now that I know he was part oh, of yeah. that. Same. Genius. He genius. is a genius. Yeah. I, I, I'm i so happy to know. I kind of wish we knew that like last week. Hey. That, that's oh, well, a, that's what Discord's respect. for. So appreciate the person that dropped that in our Discord. Thank you. Join our Discord, guys. Shout out to our Discord. Yeah. Join our Discord. What up? Join our Discord. Uh, after, after he gets that award for his fantastic commercial. I don't, I don't actually know if it's for that. They just kind of gave it to him without saying what it's for. Yeah. Um, but then they go to a back room and it's just Topaz and him and they're having a nice little like lunch or dinner or something. Um, <laughs> this, part's so stupid. This, this part's so weird. Topaz struggles with a water dispenser. Um, and then he's like, oh, yeah, so I'm into Emika, right? This is where he says like, oh, I've been, you know, like, I think I like her. Maybe I'm not quite sure. But then he shows her that he shows uh, Lily her Instagram and Lily focuses real hard on a bikini video. He oh, sure he, does. Good he's, he's made his intentions clear from the get-go to be fair 100%. to the guy and i don't know if you guys know who butch vig is but with that hat on butch vig is he was a famous producer he did like all the grunge albums from the 90s he did never mind he's done a lot of seminal work he's the current drummer for garbage from the 90s again too anyways lily frankie looks like that asian version or vice versa of butch vig they are like kind of separated at birth to me and i they're think around I know the who same you're talking age. about yeah they're, they're around the same age but yeah butch vig has done almost they're the same person they've done um, a, yeah secretly. he's produced like probably half the albums we've ever listened to in our entire lives he's that prolific hmm. i th- like other than the fact that obviously he's looking at her instagram and focusing in on all the bikini pictures i thought he like did a weird like armchair psychologist moment of mm. this where it's like she needs to be seen she needs yeah. attention you can tell by her instagram and this and this and like you're gonna get like 
what 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 did he say like you're gonna get like walked over by a girl like that that's not right for you yeah he said that instagram it showcases her vanity ah yes she's very which it's like what else is instagram that's what, though yeah <laughs> instagram dude that's this what is, instagram this is for. such like a like a teaching moment though because he like he even starts out he's like well I know you clean my house, and I know you're cleaning Terrace house, right? <laughs> so I was like, yes, yeah. sir. I cleaned right before I came here or something along those lines. <laughs> like, wow. And he do. Wow. He do. Yeah. He totally do. They are a do. very interesting pairing together, these two. They have a very interesting relationship. I've never seen yeah. anything like it. Something else Lily says here that I'm very curious as to whether this is going to... We're going to see more of this in the future with Topaz. But he analyzes him and says stumbling through life is your emma oh. right and i mean that's what not a a, necessarily a, that's oh, not yeah. a bad thing but that definitely says a lot about who you are and that kind of makes me think like how much of a i mean not fluke but i guess how lucky was topas that he found out about this competition that lily frankie was hosting and then somehow was the hottest enough guy to win it and then finally ended up being lily frankie you know what i mean like I, i'm just curious yeah. like what chain of extremely lucky events maybe led to where he is now on Terrace House. Yeah, he well, I guess he won that show. I don't even know the full details about that. But one of the biggest lines here, Lily says, too, is, you know, uh, it's a dangerous slope to try and chase a past that was never meant to be. I'm pretty sure that he's scripted. Deep, man. I don't know. I just, no, it just seemed like sage-ass <laughs> advice. It's part of but his it's like, uh, acceptance speech for the award. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but it was just, I mean, it's, I, he stuff he says a lot of stuff he says aside from like girls and bikinis and stuff most of the stuff lily frankie says makes a lot of sense to me honestly just mm. sounds like someone who's been there done that um and yeah i, I can see because he doesn't know him because he doesn't know what that date was like all he sees is this instagram so yeah he's just making a snap judgment but he's like ah, she doesn't she seems like she's on a completely different planet than you you know but if you want to date her it's not going to go well but stumbling through life is your mo so go for it and it was kind of like a like a not a compliment. <laughs> yeah. No. And you know that Tobas takes every single thing Lily Frankie says to heart. Oh, That's yeah. his father figure. That's oh, yeah. like the end all be all. He's going he's not going to be like, No, you're wrong. Like if if Lily Frankie doesn't approve of Emika, it's not gonna happen, I don't think. Right. Like right. Yeah, if Lily that Frankie was... told him to jump off a cliff, he might. Yeah, he that's might. I uh I think it's it's a positive thing to a degree that Lily Frankie is sort of the father figure that we learn later on Topaz was missing. But at the same time, I feel this relationship could easily steer into an unhealthy one. Um, and so I'm curious to see how this relationship evolves as we see more and more of it. Because uh, I think this scene was probably one of the more, <clears throat> excuse me, lighter ones uh, out of the ones we've seen with Lily Frankie so far. Uh, yeah so i don't know i'm gonna uh, keep an eye on this because I, i'm kind of worried about it you're talking about lily frankie and topaz's relationship yeah well i think based on everything lily frankie said is that he really does have topaz's what he thinks is topaz's best interest in mind like he's giving yeah, him really so. good advice i think i don't think he's giving him really any bad advice he just doesn't know emika and he might be right about no. emika too topaz might not know emika either you know topaz yeah. is blinded by lust right now you right. know so I, I don't know i think i think they have a good relationship right at this moment lily frankie seems very smart to me yeah i think i think lily frankie for now he seems really nice and, and genuine at least that he wants topaz to succeed in life right i mean if you think about it like topaz uh lily frankie could have picked anyone to be his driver you know he could have like reached out to a professional butler driver corporation that probably exists and been like, give me your best driver. But no, he chose like this really hot 21 year old boy, you know, that won a competition. <laughs> now it sounds weird, but that's yes. yeah. sounds weird. But you know, like he could have picked anyone where he decided, like, no, I'm going to take in this young guy and I'm going to like teach him about life a little bit. And I think that's yeah. nice. Take him under my wing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the Robin to my Batman. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, I think let's take a little break from Topaz. Don't worry, it's a short one because the rest of the episode after this scene is still full of topaz. For real. But uh, we're in the girls' room and it's Vivi and Hada and oh boy, a, a war is brewing. Y'all, um, uh, Vivi confronts Hana about the crying downstairs, right? And uh, 
I don't know. This was weird to me because at first Vivi's like, oh, I don't know if Rio's into me. I mean, for all we know, he could be into you. Come on. Oh, yeah. Come, yeah. That's the fucking worst kept secret I've well, ever heard. Um, ass. Yeah. Like, like no oh, one oh. believes you, Vivi. Quit trying to placate. It's just completely show yeah. and prove. Like, be I real. Think yeah. Good intentions, I think, I hope, right, that it's coming from a well-intended place. Just horrible execution. Bad. But Yes. But then she turns it around and is like, oh, and I took this video of Ryo and I watch it over and over and over oh, again. And he gets dude. cuter every time dude, I watch it. She yeah, is totally not into him, though. Infatuated. Like, that is yeah, like yeah. infatuated. That's like unhealthy almost. A little bit. Like, and to say that to least, Hana. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's cold. Have the, have the decency to just be like, uh, don't mention it. Like, mm. sure, that's going on in your own private life, but you know she likes him. Why would you just rub that in her face? Like, I don't know if she's thinking like, oh, we're bonding over the fact that we both like the same guy and we both have equal chance with him. Maybe that's in Vivi's mind because Hana's been around for longer. She has more of a rapport with uh, Rio that she might think, even though we've seen that, I think Vivi has the better rapport with Rio now, even over just a couple days versus the the weeks and weeks that Han has been there. But I, I, I don't know. Is is this a malicious? Is this just like a misunderstanding? I don't know. I'm getting flashbacks to uh, Noah telling Shohei that he kissed Saina while he was ma, drunk. Ma, 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 I actually think it's pretty big of Hana to... I, I mean, I take her at her word, but she says she's not mad at Vivi. She's not mad mm. at Rio, really. She, this is something she has to deal with herself. That's pretty mature thought to have. It's very I, easy. I, I don't think anyone would blame Hana for being upset at Vivi if she was. If I think that if Hana hadn't had that conversation with Kai, I think she would have. There would have been a little bit more animosity on Hannah's end mm. or Hana's end going into this conversation. Yeah, because. I, I, I agree. I think it's very big of Hana to at least say, like, I just want to be clear. I don't feel animosity toward you. Right. Like, I think right. Exactly. That, that takes a mm. lot of guts to say when probably on the inside at that maybe at that moment, at least she probably really fucking hated Vivi. You know, like just in that, that few minutes of her life, it was just like, God damn it. She's drooling. Yeah, yeah she's dangling the video she has in her phone now in front of her face. Yeah. yeah she's just taking that knife and driving it in deeper, man. That's all she's doing. A little salt on the wound. But, yeah. but Vivi is infatuated. If we didn't already know it before, which we all did, this is like, okay, 100%. Vivi's in. She mm. Now she doesn't care about getting all three guys. What other two guys? You know? Rio's, Rio's the only she's, guy yeah. for what me. Guys? She's, she's yeah. got her blinders on now. She's squared in. <laughs> See, the, those other two folks are guys. Rio is a man. Guess so. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. A basketball the man. Distinction. Yep. All right, do you guys enjoy that break from Topaz? Because we're about to dive right the back in. The whole rest of this episode is Topaz. <laughs> we're going to get, we're gonna get and, the whole Topaz and nothing but the Topaz. And I, I don't mean this in a bad way. I actually really like him um, in this episode. It's just that, man, this is all him at this point. Um, so we're in the boys' room. It's Kai and Topaz, right? Uh, Topaz was just at work, and he loved every minute of it, which is so <laughs> on brand for him. Yes. Um, work his life. Work his life. Yes. And uh, Kai asked how the date went. And I think, you know, Topaz has a pretty apt understanding here of, uh, well, maybe it's, it's a lack of understanding, but at least he knows himself enough to know where this wandering is coming from. He's unsure if it's romance or if he's just happy to befriend someone because he's a lonely guy. Like mm. earlier today, right? He was just at a train station drinking beer alone and he felt so lonely. Like there's a difference between being alone and feeling lonely. Oh. And he definitely oh, yeah. felt lonely. Right. And yeah. he starts tearing up here because he's like, it's just been nice to be in Tara's house and be able to make small talk with everyone every day. Oh, it's sad because it he doesn't yeah, he man. doesn't have a peer group. Probably everyone he hangs yeah. out with is Lily Frankie and like all his older friends, you yeah. know, and he's there working. So he's not really hanging out mm -hmm. either. You know, he's not himself. He's on the clock. You know, yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, it's a good break for him. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've certainly felt, you know, I can share the same feelings of isolation that sometimes here, you know, I'm glad that we can still connect here remotely and stuff, but yeah, I haven't like physically, you know, talked to someone in person in a, in a long time, like a lot of other people have too. Um, but man, he gets emotional here, doesn't he? Mm. You know, he's saying that, wasn't he saying, or is it later, but he was saying like, he's never felt loved. Yeah. And that's he's like, when he's drunk. He's letting it pour out. Well, I think he, yeah, I think he, boy. 
I think he just talks about it a little bit here to uh, Kai as well, too. You know, he's just yeah. never felt it around the people behind him, and he starts getting teared up, and that might be what drove him to drink, maybe. To start drinking. This is where he says, literally, I'm starving for affection. Dude, like, yeah, he just, that he just says a title drop. That is sad. And then he was talking about how much he loves Lily because, you know, he's like a father to him. Sometimes he cooks for him. That really, like, affected him when he said that. And, you know, his dad abandoned the family. Didn't he say he has one sibling yeah. and one mom? Mm-hmm. Yep. My yeah. My dad abandoned him. And he definitely has abandonment issues about it. And he definitely has, like, um, affection issues and, and love issues. Um, that he's working through and we were seeing that and you know like kudos for him for for sharing this with us because i think that's kind of brave to be this vulnerable on tv you know mm-hmm. he's putting himself out there right like more than anybody really yeah for sure this is the kind of like i don't know like um, emotional like moments that you expect to see on um like reality TV where they're talking like directly to the camera and being Mm. like, I never felt love because like my father abandoned me, whatever. Mm. But I, I'm really glad to see this played out in a much more natural way where it's like, yeah, we have like the, I guess like lubricant of him being like a little tipsy and very sad, but I, I'm glad that he's feels free enough to talk about it in the house and that the people in the house are receptive and want to talk to him about it and that vivi said what she did i am so glad that we had the whole conversation about you can't like the the phrase like you can't love someone until you love yourself it's like that's bullshit like maybe that's a very western idea and that's why like vivi and i were like vibing on that but i was like nah it's bullshit it's bullshit you've you've experienced love you got love but it can feel like you don't sometimes for sure yeah, I, I think Vivi is really on point here in that, what, what was it she said? Something along the lines of, you can't wait to rely on someone to love you first. Because then you're Cause de- you're, yeah. you are depending on the actions of others to control your life, which is right. as, mainly you know her problem with that theory. Yeah, as opposed to just find the love within you. Or maybe it doesn't even have to be love, but just find something within you where you can be content with who you are, right? Mm. Uh, like officially where I fall on this side of the debate of like, do you have to love yourself first to love someone else? Or do you have to be taught what love is in order to love somebody else? I'm more the latter than the former. So I'm more in line with Topaz here and less in line with Vivi. Like, I don't think like love just divines itself inside you and just bubbles up spontaneously. And now you know it. And now you know how to show it. Like clearly he's had issues here. And I think like the main takeaway here is he kind of proved, or actually Vivi kind of proved that point that. He does know how to love. Uh, it's just his love language is different than he's not realizing that he's showing love by doing acts of service, by doing the dishes, mm. by cleaning the house. That's how he loves people, you know? And so someone showed him that before in the past, and that's what people did. They maybe weren't like hugging and kissing and and loving him physically and affectionately like that, but he did learn that behavior somewhere to show someone you care about them by doing those acts of service. So it's just a matter of love language. So I think that kind of, to me, like confirms like, okay, yeah, you have to be shown what love is before you can love someone else. And this isn't just coming from me. This is also coming from other experts out there. I'm not going to like throw any names out there, but like this is a widely debated topic. And I think that usually the research has shown that, yeah, you do have to be shown love before you can really show know how to show someone that you love them it's not just something that just poof it's there and now love is here as romantic an idea as that sounds yeah i uh first of all vv won a lot of points though with me for this scene in particular um i i I just love how level-headed she is and how she handled topas in the situation very well um and it definitely came from a place of like caring right um, and I think that I love that Topaz really, we pull back the, we pull back the curtain on, on Topaz like crazy between these two scenes. Like, um, I mean, we learned a lot about his character and I, it actually really made me happy to, to hear that he genuinely loved working for Lily Frankie. Was that the only one? Mm-hmm. Like I, mm-hmm. I, no, I thought yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Cause I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure how we felt about working for, for Lily Frankie and, uh, I I am am glad to know that uh, like he's like he's filling that void for Topaz 
um and it's it must be insanely difficult dealing i mean he was in tokyo for eight ten months or whatever and just completely socially isolated to a degree and real so quick, colin kai even said like you're really lucky to have a job that you love mm, you know yeah. he's really mm. getting high, high levels of satisfaction from his day job and i agree like that's all we could ever hope for is feeling like yeah. we're making a difference yeah and i think kai was was pretty supportive too i mean that was a lot to be to have dumped on you too right like that's that's a that's some personal bombs a little bit there too, and I think Kai Kai handled it well and was very supportive too. Uh, to bring it back to the the kitchen scene, what I think is really smart of Vivi to have done here, right, is that like let, let's let's take a step back from the situation a little bit and just kind of look at it, you know, as as a little more objectively as we can. What we have here is a drunk man who is a little bit belligerent and really sad about where his life is, and two sober women trying to basically talk him off a ledge and he's red of, right he's red as fuck he's very red tomato <laughs> tomato red, tomato red. yeah so funny to pay, to pay to oh red. no uh, anyway. don't do it don't uh, do it so, don't do so it. this could have broken very badly right because when you're that drunk you could totally have this worldview of like no i don't care what anyone says my life sucks and it's never getting better right like he could have just been an asshole about all of this but for one, I give him props for actually listening, right? Like, that's mm, insane mm. to do with, with how drunk he seemed, right? Like, that's fantastic that he did and seemed to internalize that message. But also, I think Vivi's really smart here in how she not only said, hey, you like, I disagree with your worldview, but also you've already show love, right? I think that's a very powerful mm. example to say, like, these things you already do, just look at them in a different light because yeah. you're already showing that you love at least being in this house, right? And that is something that you can't, like, there's no way for Topaz to dispute it. Like, it's not like he's going to suddenly stop doing the dishes because he's like, no, I don't feel love, so fuck it, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, no. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's going to keep doing he'll it. He'll get in trouble with Lily if he does that. Right, and that's, mm -hmm. that I think, maybe helped him realize, like, oh, maybe I, I do kind of at least have an idea of what love is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also, just because I don't necessarily agree with Lily's theory on that doesn't mean that I... Like, don't think she's awesome in this scene. She's showing Wait, Vivi or, or sorry, I said Vivi. Lily, didn't I? Yeah, I meant Vivi. Yeah, uh, yeah, her exactly what she says, like, you know, hoping love will come and then getting dejected when it doesn't is super lame. And she's like, not really mincing her words here. Like, she's like telling him, like, Hey, this is how it is. This is life. We got to deal with it. This is your situation. You're the only person who can pull you out of this, this uh, victim kind of mentality, mm. you know, mm. and, and no one's going to do it for you. So you have to really assert yourself. And yeah, it is tough love. And she's not just telling him what he wants to hear in order to just, you know, move on to the conversation with their lives. She's like really trying to help him, giving him good advice. And I, mm. I was really yeah. impressed by that, especially, you know, as Rio said, as someone at her age, she's very uh, mature. She's very grounded. She's given a lot of thought to things. You know, I think that she's just demonstrating here. She's got her shit together and she's generally a good person that cares about the roommates in the house. And it's awesome. Yeah, as impromptu as this like kind of intervention was, like I think everyone involved did very well. Vivi had um her arguments very well organized. Tapas was like receptive toward it all even though he was he was kind of drunk and there were even a few times where he was like, "Well, that's the ideal." And she's like, "No, it's that's reality." Yeah. And then he was oh. like, "I I see what you're saying there." And Hana was yeah. there. It, Hana was <laughs> also Hana there. Was there. Um <laughs> She was there she to was nod along. She was nodding along. <laughs> observing. She said a couple things at some point. But sure. obviously we sure. remember more of what <laughs> Vivi was yeah. expounding on very eloquently, especially yeah. for her third language. Jeez, <laughs> Vivi. Good um, God. Right. Jealous. But I, I, yeah, I, I think like walking away from this, everyone, good stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I wondered, though, if, if Hana was so quiet because she was actually getting a lot out of this conversation, too. Maybe she was nodding along to, like, in her head, she was like, damn, that's, like, salient that's advice. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to say, though, like, this, the these two scenes, I love them so much, and they define the reason why I love this fucking show. Mm. Like, th this is why I watch Terrace House. These, like, moments like these. It's a huge reason. Human, human, real, raw. Exactly. Yep. House. I mm -hmm. just hope that Topaz doesn't look back on the scene and is embarrassed. It's hard not to be when you're like mm -hmm. recorded forever mm -hmm. for posterity. You're drunk. You're red faced. You're crying. You're emotional. Uh, you know. I hope he he takes away good stuff here, and I hope 
you know, um, Lily doesn't lay into him too much more. And I guess is the main concern. Because honestly, you I, I kind of hope he looks. I hope he looks at this and is embarrassed. Because in a way that oh. I like to think he'd be like, that was three months ago. That's me. the old me. I'm a, I'm a different, right. better mm-hmm. Topaz now. Yeah. You know that guy yeah. was lame, Fair and enough. I'm way better, Fair and enough. I can handle my alcohol better. Maybe I don't know. Fair Hopefully, enough. yeah. Um, I think let's let's move on to the last scene of this episode. It's it's pretty low key, right? Uh, we I, presumably it's another day. Um, Topaz is cleaning dishes. He's vacuuming the living room. He's very, he's doing very Topaz like things. Um, and then Emmy comes downstairs and asks if she can help. And you know they they kind of work together in cleaning up the house, which is nice. Um, and Topaz just kind of comes out and says it. Hey, I'm interested in you. I I, I think I, I like you a bit, and I would like to go see the movie yesterday and have dinner with you on Thursday. My man, my man, look at my man over here killing it. <laughs> she even moved plans for him. That's pretty powerful. Something. Yeah. Instead of just being, oh, can't do it, can't do it. And she's like, oh, I'll move it. It's fine. Yeah, he's like, he's like, no, you shouldn't do that. No, she's like, no, it's fine. I'll do it. I I'll, got I'll you yogurt. Plans. It's good for hangovers. Is that, that true? I know, I've never heard, heard that before, before, but I mean, it doesn't seem to be too far-fetched. There's probiotics you, there. I don't know. You guys don't know about the hangover, the yogurt hangover? You you smear it on your forehead. Stop and you it, lay Robert. down at a 90 degree angle <laughs> par- parallel to the ground. I would love to hear the after story of somebody taking all your bullshit advice that you've ever said on this show. And then yes, what's their life like exactly. now? How's that yogurt <laughs> doing on your forehead? <laughs> you rub it right My into the temples. My skin is flawless. Yes. My hangover is still here, but damn it. I'm glowing. But damn it, my Hell skin yeah. looks good. Mm. Yeah. Man, you're starting to sound like Gwyneth Paltrow over here, man. <laughs> Yikes. Goop. Um, I don't know. What I really liked about this uh, this dato ask, asking out stuff, um, we've seen a lot of uh, people initiate dates, right, on Terry's house. Just in the history of it, we've seen a lot of people ask, like, hey, are you free this day, right? What I love is in this one, I don't think we've seen this at all in, well, maybe a few times, but this is one where Emmy's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. Like, I don't know what to say. You know, it's like she's genuinely caught off guard. It's kind of like she's let her guard down. And with her guard down, she's like, I don't know what else to say here. It's very embarrassing, right? And that is so wholesome to me. Because I feel like if she had asked Topaz the same thing, he might have been a little bit like, oh, that's a little embarrassing. Oh, my gosh. What do I say? I'm nervous. I mean, he basically confessed her in a way. He's like, I feel like the only reason I want to, after he already asked her to hang out with her, it's like the only reason I want to hang out with someone is to get to know them better romantically in a way. It was almost like a quasi confession. You know, and she's Mm. like, she's embarrassed. Like, oh, I feel bashful. I don't know what to do. Oh, gosh. And then he takes that picture of her. Also to note. I just noticed this. Emika has her bra strap out and her shoulder thing down on her sweater. This is a move in the house, people. Wink. Confirmed conspiracy Wink. theory. It is shoulder season, my dudes. Shoulder season. Hell yeah. Shoulder season. Cue the I, I uh, think X-Files so. I, theme. I love that she Dun-dun-dun. replied, though, <laughs> with, I would I would love to hang out with you more, too. Like yeah. She's definitely on board. And it's... it's Good to see that Topaz is the exact opposite of the passive boys that we got at the beginning of this. This he is there. Series. He's on a mission. Up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He was there for mm-hmm. Emika. That's why he is here. And honestly, I'm liking this Emika a lot more. Um, it's it's a very far cry from the one that was like, "Hey, you owe me sushi because I wore your shirt once." Yeah. And, yeah. It, you know. Go ahead, Jack. And it shows that these ladies, Hana and Emika, are handling the post. Rio saga completely differently. They're going in completely different directions. Yeah. Hana's gonna they be like, are. no, I need to force my feelings on Rio and get a straight answer. I'm gonna cry if I don't get it. Emika's like, I'm oh, this other guy likes me. Let's, you know. I mean, they only have so much control over whatever, but it's just interesting, right, to see two girls with the same issue handling it completely differently. Yeah. And I don't want this to be the end for them. I I don't want the the Rio thing to be the end all be all. I really want to see, you know, what happens with Emmy and Topas. And I want to see like Hana get some kind of closure before she decides her time at Terrace House is over. Uh, because yeah. I, I'd be really interested in seeing that, like, if she decides to stay on after the whatever happens with Rio. But we'll have to wait and see. You know what I want to see? I want to see Kai perform. 
That's that's oh, yeah. my next. Oh, too. Well, yeah, we talked about. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's barely in this episode, but yeah, we did talk about how uh, last Apparently. week or two weeks ago, actually, how he's um new at stand up. So, like I said a couple weeks back, like that is concerning to me that someone's just starting out. I would be feel a lot more comfortable if he's like, oh yeah, I've been doing this forever. Uh, you know, I do stand up in English. Uh, yeah, I'm a cold grizzled pro. This ain't no thing. But he's like, no, I just found laughter out of a heartbreak, and I decided to try this on a whim. I'm like. Okay, well, hopefully, dude, you're good. I will I will be brutally honest either way. Like I'm I love stand up comedy and this dude better make me laugh or or it's gonna be bad. Or you'll break his kneecaps. Not necessarily that, but ah. <laughs> Yeah. Murder. I think that uh the Emmy that we got, the Emika that we got around Rio when she was uh head over heels for him for a little while, I think that was a different person almost. I think because that that also Keep in mind that came around the fact that around the time that she was very confused about what she wanted to do with her life. Right. I mean, she still kind of is. But around that time, we got a confession and she was that was like at the peak of like, I, I'm really lost on as to the direction my life is going. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think she was just kind of like. Grabbing at stuff, grabbing at things like maybe she was trying to make the going out with the this pro basketball player part of her identity. Or something she was looking something mm-hmm, for something mm-hmm. to kind of grab onto, and so that led to her kind of taking on a different persona than what we're seeing with with Topaz here, which is I think I'm getting the sense it's closer to who she really is, more genuine. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I kind of feel that same way. I think maybe she was just kind of like grasping at something to do, right? And yeah, when yeah. you do that, you kind of flounder a bit. Um, Blood but yeah, blood. I think that. This is a good place for us to wrap our discussion on episode 28. Uh, we will be back next week. We're going to talk about episode 29 about love. We're going to talk about love, guys. Hey. Shocker. About love. Yep. Um, <laughs> Never done that before. I'm, I'm excited. About love. It's about love. Um, but yeah, uh, th- this, uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, any theories that you think we missed, um, you can email those at questions at terracehousepodcast.com. Uh, and like we mentioned earlier in the show, you know, we've got our discord. If you want to join that, the link's in the description below. It's a lot of fun. If you just want to kind of hang out and talk to us or other, uh, fans of our show. Um, and something I kind of wanted to say here, uh, thank you all so much just for kind of like listening to our show just in general. I mean, we, you know, we're always grateful for what you guys do for us and you know like listen for from us but you know we've noticed a lot of uh big ups on youtube recently and it's been it's been pretty freaking cool so thank you guys for that thank you yes thank you, you everybody. guys rock hell yeah we'll be back next tuesday with another episode where we're going to talk about episode 29 about love this has been tadaima thanks for listening itekimasu If you enjoy our show, please like, comment, and subscribe. And ding the bell to receive notifications when we publish new content. Follow us on social media and check out our brand new Discord server linked in the description below.